Well, hello there and welcome to the living room of the dollhouse for another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Used Elfers for December 22nd, the day of continuity. That's right. And here at the top of the page, a visual representation of the day of continuity. Well, we have us an image. I'm not quite sure this stands, but boom, what is it? It's a water wheel. That's right. Something that might be attached to a grain mill, if you like. That's right. Now, does that stand as a uh, adequate visual representation of the day of continuity? Hey, who's to say? Maybe we'll make some kind of connotation as we get on with the read. But that being said, not altogether all too important. No, what is important, though, is it's December 22nd, and hence, it's somebody's birthday. And so if it's your birthday today, I just want to say happy birthday. That's right. That's what's important. Wishing you a happy birthday. But... If this video finds you late, I don't know, days, weeks, months, whatever the case may happen to be, I just want to say, I hope you had a happy birthday in that instance. That's right. I hope you had a happy birthday. Now, for everybody else who's joining us randomly or more ideally to celebrate the December 22nd birthday, I just want to say hello, welcome, and I hope you enjoy yourself. Now, before I dive in with the redirect, something I like to do around these here parts, and that's a roll some dice. That's right. This is the Diecast A Birthday broadcast. So I like to live up to the namesake there. But I do so more importantly for synchronicity's sake. And here we rolled us. Oh, it's the logo. A one and a four, four or five. Now, what is synchronicity? You're probably wondering. Uh, well, my friends, a lot of times we get out in the world chasing down our errands or the things we need to do, getting after the job, if you like, and we got the blinders on. That's right. We don't necessarily see what's going on around us. And it's often been said, at least as I've heard it, that the universe will put things down in our path to help us manifest our goals and desires. But you can't necessarily notice those things if you got the blinders on, if you're too laser a focus on other things. And it's often been said too, as I hear it, that the universe or powers that be will continue to put things in your path even if you stray. That's right. So this is an exercise in identifying those things that the universe might put down in your path. And we're asking for a direct sign. That's right. You're one in your four, four or five. Something we can recognize, all right? without the shadow of a doubt. That being said, you don't have to go with the numbers I rolled for you. The intention is there, but hey, you know what? It is ideal you take a pair of dice. And why do I say that? So you can describe directional values to number sets and also, I don't know, time limits with which to go in those directions. But hey, once you've got all that established, you know, you pick your point to take off from, I don't know, maybe a, a city park per se, your favorite park, well, you get going in your direction with your time limit. But here's the thing. Get those blinders off. Start soaking up everything you see around you like a sponge. I know it might be a little difficult at first, but hey, you never know. The day might start to take on a little bit of a theme to show you that you're on the right path. A little bit of magic in the mix there, if you like. But you can't see those things if you got the blinders on. If you're too focused on the numbers, that's right. So that being said, you're taking things in like a sponge and maybe you reach the end of your first time limit, your first directional value. But hey, maybe you're not seeing anything. Well, maybe look up at some of the street signs. What's this? Hey, maybe you notice you're on a 5th Street. That's right. Or 14th Street, perhaps. Hey, I'd take that as a sign to show you you're on the right path. And hey, maybe a city bus pulls up. And maybe it's the number 14 line. Hey, it could be. But maybe they blow right past you so you don't have an opportunity to get on there. Well, that's okay. Maybe you don't like riding the bus anyhow. The universe probably knows that about you. There you go. That said, I would roll my dice to see how long to follow in the direction the bus went. And uh, once again, maybe you reach the end of your time limit, not, not necessarily seeing anything, but hey, you know what? Maybe you look up on the building there and hey, it just so happens to have, oh, what's this? A 14 in the address or a five, who's to say? Uh, but that said, maybe you look on the building also and there's a giant mural on there. Hey, what is it? Maybe it's a water wheel. That's right. Like I said, the day might start to take on a theme. I would say take that as a sign. Maybe go in that building. It just so happens to maybe be... I don't know, some kind of antiquities store. Maybe you're not the sort that's in line for an antiquity of, of any kind of sort, and you already got enough furniture as it is. Hey, just go in there, see what you see. 
Maybe the person behind the counter asks how they can help you and you just say, just be open and honest. Yeah, you know, I'm not really looking for anything antiquity wise. I'm just on a synchronicity walk. And they go, what are you talking about? You're like, well, I got my dice here. My numbers is a one and a four for a five. And hey, guess what the address is here? And they go, really? That's what you're here for? And you show them this video maybe. And they go, that's crazy. And you go, I know, right? And they go, no, 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 not the synchronicity part. Well, that is a little crazy, but it's my birthday too. That's right. Hey, it could happen happen all right coincidence you say well hey you know what let's lean into it let's start stacking up coincidences all right let's go see some water wheels go meet some people who have the same birthday just see what, what happens you know but i think you get the idea of what i'm saying here maybe that person just happens to close up shop and join you on your walk because nobody else is in the market for antiquities today either not on the day of continuity no sir ma'am that's right so in any event hey just get out there see what you can see see taste touch feel maybe even see or smell a little bit of the magic that's right or hear it i think it's pointing my ear in any event i think you get the idea so let's dive in with your birthday read all right your month is december your day the 22nd your sign is 29 to uh 29 degrees sagittarius to one degree capricorn of the sagittarius capricorn cusp and your quality and elements is cardinal earth oh that's right the first day of the old cardinal earth and I'd say that lands you on the first day of Capricorn in the Zodiac there, even though you're landing in the cusp. All right, enough information on that end. December 22nd, the day of continuity. Those born on December 22 are masters of the long line. And in their work or their family life, the theme of succession is an important one to them. Their prophetic powers are usually reserved for accurately predicting what they themselves will be doing in the future on the basis of their past track record. This does not mean to imply that they are uh, incapable of changing course, but rather that they know well what they want in a given period of their life and plan their time and efforts accordingly. Security, security rather oriented, December 22 people generally progress slowly and surely, year after year, building up the structure of their lives. And due to their careful nature, they experience fewer self-induced debacles than most. But when catastrophe hits them, perhaps once or twice in a lifetime, it says in parentheticals, it hits hard, all right? And yet after a reasonable period of time spent licking their wounds, they continue on their exonerable path. And if they are highly ambitious, which is rarely the case with December 22 people, it says in parentheticals also, their climb to the top may be an agonizingly slow one, due both to their refusal to take untoward risks or compromise their integrity. Inherent in their work as well as their approach to life is something of a oh, let's see I missed something here. Inherent in their work as well as their approach to life is something of a craftsman who receives as much pleasure from the process itself as from the finished product. And December 22 people appear to be very patient. And such is true in the long haul. Yet in any given daily situation, they can let small things bother them and grow irritated, uh, unaccepting, or condemning. And their reactions tend to be swift and their anger immediate. And afterwards, they rarely carry any malice with them once they have expressed their disapproval. They do, however, expect that their rules will be followed to the letter on the following occasion, and particularly in their attitudes toward their children. And they must avoid becoming rigid authoritarians, however, since such behavior can well arouse their family's resentment and, in some cases, rebellion. And for the most part, December 22 people have a rather serious and secretive nature. Yet when their humor shines, those around them will surely bask in its glow. And indeed, those born on this day enjoy nothing more than the camaraderie of a few close friends or family members. 
However, as solitary individuals who need to be alone a great deal, they are not so comfortable at larger social gatherings, where they may choose to withdraw into themselves rather than take center stage. They must be careful that their humor, which can have a cutting, ironic, or satiric edge, does not harden into sarcastic barbs and negative bombshells. An important task for them is to strike a balance between fun and seriousness, between social exposure and isolation, and if possible, find a channel through which their profound and often isolated thoughts and feelings can find expression in the world. All right, what a rather well-rounded birthday breakdown, I would say. Uh, but you know what? It was a little bit singular of focus in a lot of regards. With that being said, I think they branched out quite a bit, added in a few valuable, uh, what do you call it, things to talk about there within the, the scope of that narrow focus, added a lot of value. Uh, that being said, hey, let's dive in with some notes. I'd like to provide a little bit of a commentary here on the breakdown, see what other connections we can make with you know, days previous or other things I've read in the book, and maybe my opinion on a little bit of it. So uh, let's dive in, shall we? December 22nd, the day of continuity. All right, you're masters of the long line in work and family, and succession is apparently an important theme to you, uh, though I don't know how that extends to work necessarily. Uh, you're also said to have a prophetic powers used to accurately uh, predict what you'll be doing based on your past record, uh, which I don't necessarily see the prophecy in myself. Uh, it's certainly a kind of dedication to stick to a personal plan for sure, uh, especially if you're said to plan things accordingly. Um, but that said, maybe you understand that exactly. Maybe it speaks to you personally because, hey, you're said to be prophetic, right? Uh, to me, it just sounds a little bit like they're, uh, I don't know, maybe trying to make a, something simple a little bit more romantic. Uh, but it's a little ironic coming from somebody who was just proposing you get out on a synchronicity walk. So <laughs> I'll leave that with you to decide. Uh, but speaking more to your dedication, at least to your goals, the reading furthers you generally uh, pro, uh, process in a, a security-based kind of life there. Uh, and you build your life up in a security-focused manner. Uh, it's, just, it's a potentially slow process to that end, and it furthers based on risk aversion, at least as I was reading it. Uh, but I like this comparison to the craftsman who takes pleasure in their work with as much, okay? That's huge. Uh, I appreciate it, and there's a unique value to be found approaching life in that way. Uh, even if in the face of catastrophe, you may have to spend quite a bit of time licking your wounds, they say there. That said, apparently smaller things may try your patience and uh, incite swift anger, they said. All right, for a very surprising turn, I thought, because I didn't anticipate that coming in for whatever reason. Uh, but I find the strict adherence to your rules, despite an absence of malice, very interesting all right it's like it's an easy take to take you know you got to right you know i wouldn't assume as much if somebody's anger or angry it's i, I think it's kind of gonna flow through even after the fact but they said that wasn't the case with you so i found that interesting as well uh, but as someone who is geared for the long haul with things in their lives i suppose it makes a certain amount of sense uh, that there may be an accompanying kind of authoritarianism, all right? You expect things done a certain way. And they said you do so with your children as well, potentially, there. Um, but structure helping the medicine go down, in so many words, hey, you know, that's, uh, that's one way to approach life, I would say. Uh, but uh, as with other people in this period, you may also have a need for your solitary time, all right? Your time alone. Uh, it's a common theme here, uh, carrying over from Sagittarius, but you're still in that cusp, so I'd say there's probably some bleed through in that area. Uh, you also have a kind of humor that sets you apart, the reading said, and uh, all told, like I said, rather uh, narrow focus, but well-rounded birthday breakdown, um, multiple uh, subversions of my expectations also, which I appreciate, because I a lot of times I think I know where it's going, and then when they go the other way, hey, you know what? Can't ask for more than that, I would say. Uh, that being said, that's been your birthday breakdown. So let's move on to your numbers and your planets. All right. Those born on the 22nd of the month are ruled 
by the number four. That's right, as two plus two equals four. And by the planet Uranus, or Uranus, depending upon how you like to say it, which is both erratic and explosive. And the added influence of Jupiter and Saturn, uh, the rulers of Sagittarius and Capricorn respectively, underlines the secretive, reserved, and explosive tendencies of December 22 people. And people ruled by the number four have their own way of doing and seeing things because they so often take the opposing point of view with self-assurance. They can sometimes arouse antagonism and make enemies. And since 22 is a double number, those born on the 22nd day of the month may be interested in doubles of various kinds to say twins, coincidences, reflections, or symmetry, for example. All right, highly personalized numbers and planets for you today. I incorporate a little bit of that cusp dynamic with Jupiter and Saturn there. Um, also, Uranus in the mix for an interesting uh, dynamic there, all told. That said, I might be getting ahead of myself. Let's dive back into the notes, see what I wrote down here. Uh, the number four in Uranus for an erratic and explosive influence, which again I found interesting considering the rigid structure that they... Uh, they uh, kind of outlined for you there in the breakdown. I got the idea you may affect, uh, or so what I have you say here, rigid structure, and I got the idea you may affect to realize your ambitions. That's right, the things that you do to get your uh, life on track there. That said, your cusp influence of the conflicting powers of Saturn and Jupiter to say constrictive versus expansive, um, it may explain more than the elements of secretiveness and uh, reservation that they related there in the, in the numbers and planets, if taken in astrological terms there. Uh, that said, Uranus is said to be the planet that electrifies or kind of stirs up the, uh, the whole uh, planetary system there. Uh, with the influences. So in terms there, uh, there's a lot going on, I would say. Uh, so structures and patience in the face of that is actually very surprising to me. Um, and to this element of being a self-assured contrarian, uh, while not surprising considering Uranus, what with the rebellion aspect there, uh, it's an interesting somewhat and characteristic entry for this particular section. But then again, maybe your contrarian nature with Uranus is actually bucking the conflict that comes up with Saturn and Jupiter. Who's to say? I don't know much about astrology that's just here in the book and I kind of have to go with what they've written previously and make my own assumptions. But a lot of times I don't know how they drill down on these things that they say come from the cusp influences and the dynamic of the primary rulership. Who's to say? But it's interesting, so let's keep going with it as we move on to your tarot. That's right. One of the more eclectic of the New Age metaphysical ideologies, even though, I don't know, it's not all that new. But that said, it's your birthday. Let's dive into it, see what it has to say, maybe make some more connections. It might, we may or may not, who's to say, but hey, we don't have to take it home with us and start dealing the cards out. That's right, we just leave it in the book. So let's get on to it. The Tarot, the 22nd card of the Major Arcana is the Fool, who in several versions of the Tarot is shown blithely stepping over the edge of a cliff. And some interpretations picture him as a foolish man who has given up his reason. Others, a highly spiritualized being free of material considerations. Positive meanings include renouncing resistance, there you go, and following instincts freely. Foolish acts, impulsiveness, and annihilation are the negative aspects. And the highly evolved fool has followed life's path, experienced its lessons, and become one with his or her own vision. All right. Total copy paste job here with the uh, what you call tarot card. They didn't necessarily personalize it here for you at all. Um, but you know what? A lot of times that's the give and take when they personalize your numbers and planets. So let's see what I had to say here. Your tarot card, the fool, uh, spiritualized being free of material considerations and following instincts freely. Uh, renouncing resistance, impulsiveness, and annihilation. All right. On its face, uh, it isn't really a card that seems to speak to what's in the breakdown, at least to me, all right? Uh, but if you are able to go the distance in your endeavors uh, for the long duration also, uh, I suppose that in itself is a form of flying in the face of resistance, right? 
at least times resistance. And if that's your natural instinct, it seems pretty apt in those terms, especially if uh, the highly evolved fool, like they said, experiences life's lessons along the way and, uh, let me see here, can become one with their own vision. That's right. That kind of seemed like what they were getting after in the breakdown. So maybe it is a pretty apt card. It's just on its face. I don't know. I didn't really, it didn't really speak to me for the day. But upon further analysis, as you saw, maybe so. Maybe so. That said, that's been your tarot. So let's move on to your health. All right, your health. Those born on December 22 can have problems related to their own profound as well as complex thoughts and feelings. Psychological problems can eventually manifest in physical troubles as well, particularly an increasing rigidity of the skeletal system or varicosities as they get older. All right. Exercise that stresses flexibility should be continued well into middle age, particularly yoga, calisthenics, tai chi, or controlled competitive endeavors. Furthermore, rather than adopting a rigid diet, albeit healthy, it says in parentheticals, December 22 people should continually explore new and exciting culinary possibilities. Their strongly controlled emotions should find an outlet in regular sexual expression. All right. I know some of you probably liked hearing that one. Though. All right. What do I have to say about your health here? Your health. Let's find it problems related to your profound and complex thoughts and feelings. Interesting. They don't really dive into this very often with the health there. Uh, with elements of psychological perhaps contributing to physical ailments. All right. You're manifesting things with those stressors. Hey, it happens. All right. Uh, for exercise, they focused on stretching and competitive activities. A little bit of, uh, what do you call it, a new thing here. Stretching isn't necessarily all that often related, so maybe take note. Uh, diet focused on exciting foods and an outlet for regular sexual expression is what they wrote for you with regard to um, what you call exercise there. Uh, a little brief, uh, but you know what, they don't often incorporate sexual activity into that, so I don't know. Maybe take note, just provided you get consent, right? Naturally. All right, what else do we have here? Uh, usually, uh, here's something of interest. If they drill down on any psychological as aspect within the health, they usually ditch the diet altogether. And here they kind of did that. They just kind of made a passing mention of, uh, of the health, as, uh, in, or the diet rather, insofar as to find foods that excite you, which I don't know, that doesn't really speak to a specific diet. They also have been uh, kind of starting to bring up this culinary aspect, like to become a good cook. And I don't know, I, I guess you could say like good cooking uh, by and large means fresh ingredients. I don't know. I kind of have to reach for this and assume what they mean. Also, the uh, stretching and the, and the rigid skeletal uh, uh, bones type thing. I don't know where they're getting at, uh, but it's a new thing. Like I said, maybe take note of it. Maybe you know exactly what they're talking about since it pertains to you. Who's to say? But that's what I had to say about your health. Uh, so let's move on to some advice. All right, your advice. Soften your forbidding side and learn to be more open and accepting. Don't condemn, all right? Doing silly things can be highly therapeutic and fun, all right? Ingratiate yourself socially. That's right. Or integrate, rather. Though I would say that works too, in ingratiate. That uh, being said, what I have to say about the advice here. All right, I didn't write it in the book, so my uh, handwriting is tiny. Bear with me here. Uh, soften your forbidding side or your unpleasant and disagreeable side, if you were to define that out. I had to look it up just to be sure what it meant. Uh, don't know why they picked up on that one writ large. I, I don't really recall anything in the breakdown that would give me the idea that you're a forbidding individual. Maybe some of the authoritarian stuff, but uh, uh, not much really got mentioned by my mind. That said, everybody probably has a little bit of a forbidding side, right? So uh, I would say there's, as, there's times to use it, times not to, but I would in general probably try to lean away from it, right? Uh, what else do we have here? Um, I'd also didn't pick up on a condemning side either, uh, but hey, you know what? Like I said, 
good advice in general. Uh, do silly things, they said, all right? Uh, maybe to combat any rigid or strict aspects of your life that may present, or to expand on your biting humor, all right? Maybe take it into a lighter, uh, you know, less serious tone. Because I can see how sarcasm, it might, it might rub people the wrong way. So if you're gonna, coming into it a little bit sillier, yeah, they might be more accepting of it, right? I would argue they did, would work out that way. That's right. Uh, ingratiates or integrate socially. Uh, about the only one I saw uh, applying to you specifically uh, to say don't isolate yourself too much. All right. I know it probably aids you in your work, especially if the through line carries through over to the past few days where they were saying that they just need the time alone to get the good work done. Um, but yeah, don't do it too much. And I say that because allowing others into our social circle or just getting out there and meeting new folks, it expands our horizons to some extent. And uh, you know what? That just only helps to improve the work in a lot of cases, I would argue. Uh, you know, maybe only uh, one out of 10 times does it actually seem to apply, but you know what? That's still something of value, I would argue. That being said, that's been the advice. Let's move on to your meditation. All right, your meditation. What do we got here for you? Speech may be musical, but silence is magical. Oh, I like that one, especially for me, for certain reasons here, which I'm not going to get into. But uh, <laughs> spe uh, once again, speech may be musical, but silence is magical. All right. That's your meditation. It's your birthday. I'm not going to uh, break it down for you or add some kind of uh, interpretation for as much. It's just for you. Uh, that being said, your meditation in the can, as it were. Let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses. That's right. Let's see where you got the muscle mass there, right? And where you've got the atrophy going on. That's right. Maybe you're doing too much stretching and not building up any bulk. I don't know. Anyway, your strengths and your weaknesses. Your strengths, you're careful. You're prepared and you're self-assured. That's a nice one. I like that one. But your weaknesses, oh, let's flip the objective mirror around on ourselves. The side that blows up your face and shows off all the things you might be insecure about. That's right. Superficially, as it were. All right. Your weaknesses. <clears throat> you're irritable. You're fixed. And you're cutting. Oh, that must be the sarcasm, the sarcasm bleeding through there. You're cutting. Now, interestingly, uh, I like to say here that uh, our weaknesses can actually be strengths. I've seen some that can kind of vacillate back and forth between strengths and weaknesses. I also like to argue that our weaknesses kind of make us who we are, so we shouldn't try to get rid of them lock stock, right? Um, but that said, if you want to take them down a hair, uh, I would argue that your strengths are going to help you do that if it's something that needs address. That's right, you're careful, prepared, and self-assured. I would say that's gonna uh, help you get over being irritated in some cases, right? Or fixed, hey, I'm self-assured, and I'm prepared to get over being fixed in my ways. That's right, all right. And cutting, well, hey, same, same case there. Just be careful. It says you're careful, be careful about being cutting. That's it. So there's your strengths and weaknesses. And with that being said, let's move on to those born on this day. And when we get into those born on this day, not only do we get to see who shares your company, but something I like to do and focus on, because I think it's important, and that's focusing on figuring out our passions. I think this is the perfect opportunity to maybe do as much. It's too often I get out in the world and I meet people and I ask them what they do, and more importantly, if they like it, and they don't. They don't necessarily have a purpose in this life or something to, to put their energy towards that they get fulfillment from. And I think it's a huge thing to, uh, you know, that we're getting out of bed in the morning, eager to get on with our day because we're going after something that we enjoy. And uh, so if you already have that in your life, you know, maybe it's just nice to see who shares your company. But if you don't have that in your life, if anything I can do for you on your birthday, it's help you stir up the fires of inspiration. And uh, maybe we can take some of that from those born on this day. So let's dive into it and see who shares your company. We have Giacomo Puccini, the Italian opera composer of Madame Butterfly and La Boheme. We also have Aline Bernstein, the first American woman theater designer and had a famous affair with Thomas Wolfe. We also have Giacomo Manzu, an Italian sculptor, Edgar Varese, French-born American avant-garde composer who wrote early electronic music. We also have Dame Peggy Ashcroft, a British stage and film actress, 
Edwin Arlington Robinson, uh, two-time Pulitzer Prize winning poet, Steve Carlton, Philadelphia Phillies baseball pitcher, four-time Cy Young Award winner, and a five-time 20-game winner, and a Hall of Famer. We also have Diane Sawyer, the TV journalist, Maurice Gibb, the singer and songwriter of the Bee Gees, and the twin brother of Robin. We also have Robin Gibb, singer-songwriter of the Bee Gees, uh, Andre Costel, Costelan, <laughs> there we go, Costel and Etz, uh, orchestra head and a conductor, Jim Wright, uh, we also, he was a U.S. congressman and House speaker and resigned amid a scandal. We also have Hector Alonzo, Alonzo, stage, TV, and film actor, John Kerry, the U.S. Senator of Massachusetts. We also have Claudia Lady Bird Johnson, the first lady and a businesswoman. Uh, we have Deems Taylor, the composer and writer and a critic. We also have Max Bill, a Swiss painter. We also have, uh, oh, he's also a sculptor, uh, archaeological writer of the, of the book. Get this continuity all right there we go gerald nichols a painter and assembly artist jean mal mal malowry perhaps a french anthropogeographer boy the words today in the names here we go also an arctic explorer and charles peters a washington monthly editor and founder and i butchered some names and some words so let's make up for that on my side of things I'm not done in malice. It's just some of those things I can't put together because of the hooked on phonics tapes I didn't get through. That's right. Any event, that's been those born on this day. Like I said, uh, hopefully you can take some inspiration from the things other folks did. That being said, I know it's a big ass tall order to do as much, but hey, hopefully just hearing it uh, and maybe me putting the bug in your ear about it helps stir up them fires. Because like I said, if there's anything I can wish you on your birthday, it's that you're out there trying to find your purpose or getting after your purpose, figuring out your passion. And that takes time and work to figure out a lot of times. And even if you have a passion in mind, time and work to make it financially viable. So once again, hopefully you can get that going for yourself. That being said, those born in the state having been related, that essentially rounds out your birthday read. Except to say, your season is winter, your sign once again is Capricorn of the Sagittarius, Capricorn cusp, and your quality and elements is Cardinal Earth. Now, what does that mean? Well, that's a different video altogether. I'll leave it at the end there for you to check out if you're interested. You can see what the channel looked like in its earlier days there. But that being said, this has been December 22nd, the day of continuity. Didn't really put together a, uh, what do you call it, uh, how the water wheel factors in there, but hey, maybe that speaks to you specifically for some reason that I can't quite gather. That being said, this has been The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and you Stelpers. I have an affiliate link for this book down in the description if you're interested in picking up a copy, diving in for yourself, or maybe just throwing it out on your coffee table for when you have parties. That's right, when you do socialize, because hey, it's going to get the ice broken in a figurative or literal fashion for sure because the conversation oh it's going to be going for better or for worse depending upon how people take having their birthday related to them that said uh the book uh, having been related not altogether all too important in that regard what is important like i said at the top wishing you a happy birthday so once again happy birthday and uh for those of you who joined us randomly or to celebrate the december 22nd birthday i just want to say thanks for joining us and i hope to see you for your birthday read Lest I forget, that's right, folks, your daily numbers. This is for everybody, the random folks and the birthday boys and girls. Get out there, see, taste, touch, feel, uh, hear, maybe even smell a little bit of the magic. And if you do, you're going to understand why I brought it up. That's right, stack up some coincidences. That's right, maybe meet some folks, who's to say. Once again, day of continuity in the bag there. Hey, I just want to say happy birthday, okay? And take care of yourselves.